Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, you know, we've been talking about the covenant and, and it's so important. The things I'm sharing with you, you know, sometimes we go this deep and to bring forth the truth of God's word because many believers don't have foundation for their belief. They don't have, and if you don't have foundation, you can easily be weary and, and swept off your feet. I'm telling you the truth. So when we take out this time to teach you depth, you know, sometimes they say, what's the necessity of all this? Hey, it's very important because you, we are getting into some deep foundations that make us who we are. And as a child of God, you should be interested in those things. So nobody will ever be able to deceive you, number one. Number two, you will be able to inherit all the promises that God has prepared for you. Not just confessing them, but enjoying them. See, many people stop on the confession level. But I believe as we share these things, the word of God is coming to your heart and your heart is open to receive it and the word is abiding in you. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread as we go on in these teachings? Are you ready? Release your faith now with me and say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. You know, our text is, our main text for this series is in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 15. I just want us to read it again. Praise God. Then we will continue where I stopped yesterday. Now it says, verse 15, remember his covenant forever. Remember his covenant forever the word which he commanded for a thousand generations the covenant which he made with abraham he was specific about the covenant he's talking about say the one he made with abraham you know thank you holy spirit see our our faith who we are today is connected to abraham there is no argument about that God took a journey with Abraham and that is what has produced us today. Now, life started with Adam, you know that, right? But then, you know, the whole world just went completely out of way. And God chose a man called Abraham and decided to walk with Abraham. I've, I've made mention of this to you before. When Jesus was talking to that woman at the well, he made a statement that we, we don't really think about. He says, you worship what you do not know. And then he said, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. And when he made that statement, you, you, you want to look at it and say, is Jesus discriminating? Is Jesus trying to say, God is only for the Jews. No. He didn't say God is for the Jews. He said salvation is of the Jews. Meaning salvation is going to come through the Jews. Now, why did he make that statement? Because of Abraham. Because of Abraham. Isaiah was prophesied. You know, because, see, because we have most of these um, journals that we have that are made of the Bible, because we have several writings, and most of them were Jewish people. Most of them were um, of Israel, okay? So it does appear we begin to think, you know, that's some people that criticize Christianity and, and, and the Bible generally. They say, oh, you guys are just following this Jewish um, tradition. Now, it's important we understand where we came from, where we are, and where we are going to. It's important we understand that. So, salvation is of the Jews. Yes, and I said Jesus made that statement because of Abraham. Okay, and then, but 
if you don't go back, that's why I'm taking us back to these things. And I'm taking time to explain what happened between God and Abraham. God cut the two vital covenants with Abraham. And we need to look at those covenants. And then we draw it to where we are today. And then what's the future for us? The future in God, of course. So, God made a plan and he, exec he began to execute it through a man called Abraham. And so he got to that point where he made a covenant with him. Yesterday, I was, we get, got deep into the covenant of Titan. I explained to you how Melchizedek met Abraham. And I told you he brought bread and wine. Now, I told you something yesterday. I said that bread and wine is eternal. He didn't buy it from the shop somewhere. Praise <laughs> God. He didn't. So it wasn't, it wasn't a physical bread and wine. That shouldn't be difficult for you to understand. Because you remember Jesus multiplied bread and Jesus turned water into wine. See? But it's the significance. See, what does that mean? That bread and that wine, they were, I call Misha, they were the word of God. See, if the man himself that showed up in Melchizedek was the word of God made flesh, think about it. The clothes he was wearing. Do you think he went to, he showed up naked in a shop and then took up some clothes and wore it? Or he showed up in someone's house, took up some clothes and wore the clothes? No. The same word that can produce a human being can produce clothes. The same word can produce food. See? And you get what I'm saying now? Now, why did he come with bread and wine? I said that, that bread and wine was eternal. You remember Jesus was talking to the, in John chapter 6, Jesus was talking to those Jews. And he said, Moses gave you that bread from heaven. He said, Moses gave you that bread from heaven. But that was not the real bread. You, you know, Jesus had fed them with bread and, and they knew it was a miracle. And they were, they were satisfied. They were, they were like, man, is this possible? And so the next day they went again. <laughs> God. And, and Jesus saw them looking for him and Jesus. He said, so you're not looking for me because, of the, because you saw the miracle. Not even the miracle. Because you ate and you were satisfied. So you found a new way of not spending your money on food. And Jesus said to them, seek that food that is everlasting. See, then they got into these arguments. He said, okay, show us a sign. What was the sign they wanted? They want to eat bread again. Moses gave them bread. No. He was bread. Now he said the funny thing, Jesus said to them, the problem is, Moses gave them that bread for 40 years. It didn't make them believe it. Imagine for 40 years you're eating bread you don't know where it's food from. You're eating food. You now, when I mean bread, of course, I'm talking about manna. He, you were eating food you don't know where it came from. For 40 years, you just go out to eat. And you're satisfied for that day. And then one time they say, Oh, give us meat. And God gave them meat. For 40 years, and they didn't believe them. So these people came again and said, Moses gave them bread. Give us bread. And Jesus is saying, I didn't get it. The bread Moses gave is not the one that God gave. <laughs> you see, when when he brought when Melchizedek brought that bread and wine, I said those were eternal food. And what was God saying? God was saying, I will bear the responsibility of taking care of you. No wonder the first thing he said to him, I said, blessed the Abraham of the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. What was he saying? The possessor of heaven and earth has blessed you. He has chosen to bless you. You know, you look at that kind of salutation like, what, what meanest this manner of salutation? People <laughs> just like, maybe said, you know, 
What kind of salutation is this? The possessor of heaven and earth have blessed me. You see, sometimes when God shows up and the way he announces himself will tell his mission. I am the Lord, your healer. You already know that he's not coming to give you money. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He's not coming to give you favor. He's coming to bring healing. Now, his mission at that moment is to bring healing. So when, when he introduced himself as the possessor of heaven, and he wanted Abraham to see him big, the owner of heaven and earth. Now, now when, when you meet someone and you, you realize the person is the one boasting to you that I am the possessor of this part of town. What's the person saying to you? Anything you want from this part of town. You can get it from me. I own the rights. Uh -huh. Anything you want from this, I'm going to give you. <laughs> it's good. And God is not hiding from you. And, and do you notice God gave him the bread and wine first? Before he even demanded the title. So that's where people get it wrong. They think we tithe so that God can bless us. No, you get it wrong. He, 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 he blesses you first. It is your recognition of that blessing. The fact that you realize that this blessing came from the Lord. Your response is by bringing forth your tithe. See? That's what you do. And you bring it to. And then he received it from Abraham, and that was saved. Now, standing yesterday, he commanded Abraham to teach it to his generations, to his children, his grandchildren. So we find Jacob, the grandson of Abraham. He understood what title it was. He knew what to do with his title. He needed to give it to God. So he vowed and said, everything you give me, I will give it thanks to you. He knew what he has been trained concerning that. This man, Abraham, got something for us that we can never get elsewhere. And then after he gave God the time, he did something again. You know, I could wish God how great this man was. Now, he was great because he was obeying God. Not because he was so smart, he came up with inventions. No, his greatness was in his obedience to God. And that's why I tell you, look, anybody can be great. What do you do with the word that God gives to you? So Abraham responded again, the Lord said to me, I said the Lord, because not Israel, it was the Lord. The Lord said to him, don't give anything to the poor. What was the Lord making me to do? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. So I want you to not just take out the tithe now. I want you to release every other thing to the king of Sodom. Now you, you think Abraham was just returning the things back to the king. No, he wasn't returning the things back to the king. He was sowing a seed. I'm telling you the truth. He was sowing a seed. God, Melchizedek, got him to sow a seed into the king of Sodom. That's why he got him to swear. You see, now, when he said, I, lest you say, you have made Abraham rich. That was not a peculiar statement for the king of Sodom alone. Okay. I told you, I think a few weeks ago, I shared this with you. Like, 
There was a reason the early church, when they got, uh, when they got born again, and they began to progress. One of the first things that you found them doing was that they were selling all they had and they were giving it to the poor. See? They were selling all they had and they were giving it to the poor. They were not even selling it and bringing it to the church. They were selling and distributing to the poor. Now, why do you think they were doing that? They were bringing themselves into this covenant. Remember, Jesus had died. Remember, he had become poor so that they would become rich. Now, when I mean they, we also, of course. But then, they began to carry out these actions just like Abraham did. Everything he got from that war when he met Melchizedek, he gave it away, gave it to that king by the command of the Lord. I Many people don't realize that God had told him to do that. He didn't do that out of his own will. He said, okay, I don't want this guy. I don't like this king. See, this king is a very proud king. I don't like the fact that he will now think that he made me. So, no, sir. He was commanded by God to do it. And he obeyed the Lord. That's why God said, lift up your hand and say before me. So he lifted up his hand. That's why he told him, I have lifted up my hand to the Lord Most High. That I will not take anything from you. So Abraham was saying, actually saying to the king, I am bound not to take anything from you. So you better receive this thing. Because the king was trying to pressure him. Because you, you know how it is. Someone has helped you so much, you want to give him something back. And the person is saying no. You know how you begin to think that, I, I hope something is not wrong. Why is he refusing my gift? And the king knew that it was the right thing to do. So, Abraham, we know you're a good man, but come on, don't go to the extreme. Why? Take the goods. And I said, no, I have lifted up my hand to the Lord this time. So that part of it was God instructing him to sow a seed. The kind of seed that makes him empty. As a proof that he believes in the covenant of God sustaining him. There are times you have to take certain steps. You see, you know, you know, <laughs> James clearly stated it, that faith without works is dead. If your faith doesn't produce physical actions, what do I mean physical action? There are physical steps men will see you do that will prove that you are walking by faith. Faith is not just a confession. We confess what we believe, but then you see us carry out certain actions. Abraham, why are you giving this king everything? Because God is going to sustain me. Yeah. It's the same thing the early church went in. Why are you guys selling your lands? Why are you guys selling all your properties and giving it away? Because we have come to understand that God will take care of us. And we're ready to prove it. Some of you listening to me, you need to come into that realm. I'm telling you the truth. You need to come into that realm. Because you, you've been confessing, oh God, you're my source. Oh God, you're my source. How is he your source? What action have you taken to prove God as your source? Have you emptied yourself before? You know, sometimes you, you, you just, no, you see, not because you're looking for something. Or because you believe something. You need to take that step. Find a way to take that step. See, God, listen, God on his side has proven. Oh, the Lord Tavila Azaza Zuzaikaba. Lekabra Gila. 
There is no one who's doing well in his faith if they will be truthful to you. That will not tell you the truth. Faith comes with a measure of sacrifice. And that measure of sacrifice is when you give your all. And you give your all, not because you're saying, hmm, God, I want something new. I want something, I want to have more money. I want to have... Now, those things are guaranteed already. But you are coming to say, God, I'm in covenant with you. And you are bound to take care of me. I've been trying to take care of myself for many years. See, I am oh, ah, my time is up. Praise God. Oh, glory, 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 glory. We'll continue from here tomorrow because this is very important. God bless you. I mean, the Lord open your eyes today. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.